Jimmy Dang from Maximum PC here at Samsung's uh, SSD Summit event speaking with... Hi, I'm Chris Geyser. I'm the Senior Manager of Business Development for Samsung Electronics America for uh, our SSD products. Cool. Uh, you know, we just got out of, out of a press conference in which you guys uh, announced the uh, 950 uh, Pro SSDs, which are Samsung's uh, new NVMe uh, PCIe SSDs that are using the M.2 form factor, yep. right? Can you tell us a little bit more about it other than the, than what I just said right there? Sure, yeah. So the 950 Pro is our first uh, PCIe NVMe drive. Uh, it's going to be available in the M.2 form factor. So it's a uh, next generation technology, obviously, that kind of starts to break the barrier of the SATA 3 interface. Um, SATA 3, you know, obviously has, has suited the entire PC industry very well. Uh, you know, but it's been a while, it's been around for a while and, uh, you know, it's relatively limiting, it's limiting the performance of the SSD. And so by moving to next generation interface like PCIe and a next generation protocol like NVMe, which is specifically optimized for flash memory, um, it allows us to, you know, continue to make performance improvements, reduce the latency of the drive, and we're seeing big uh, increases uh, in terms of the overall sequential and random performance of the drive as a result of that. So we're excited about it. Uh, we think that this is really the time to launch that product because of uh, the Skylake platform coming out, because of Windows 10 launch. You know, we're now seeing a driver support and bio support uh, that, that really means the ecosystem for PCIe, PCIe and NVMe are, are really, uh, the time is now uh, for people to, to make that change and to, to switch over to PCIe. So we're excited to have what we think is going to be the best performing PCIe uh, drive on the market. Um, and we think that, uh, you know, it's going to be a hot seller in terms of people wanting to build new Skylake platforms and new systems, uh, you know, throughout the rest of the year. So, uh, you know, we're very excited about it. Initially available in 256 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte capacities. And, uh, you know, it's going to be in a relatively affordable product. So we'll see prices that are, you know, below, uh, well below $200 for the 256 gigabyte uh, product. And, uh, and we think that's, uh, that's the right price point and we think it's going to sell well. Cool. I, I want to talk about the the uh, the size, of the storage, uh, yeah. a little bit, but I want to back up uh, just a bit. Uh, just going back to the uh, NVMe versus, uh, you know, the traditional ACHI. Yeah. Um, and just uh, can you explain uh, what the limitations of ACHI, which the uh, yeah. traditional SATA drives were? The big advantage of moving from Aki to uh, NVMe is that the uh, you're basically creating a much more efficient stack. So the uh, amount of uh, uh, commands and the amount of steps that were actually in the Aki protocol uh, were relatively inefficient. Um, sometimes necessary uh, for traditional spinning platter hard drives to have that level of complexity. But when you have a very fast, very efficient, uh, you know, uh, flash memory uh, solution, you don't necessarily need the additional steps that are in that uh, are, are, are in that uh, uh, protocol. So. Uh, it's really been optimized for very low latency. It's been optimized for, uh, you know, obviously uh, very fast performance. Um, and it also increases the overall parallelization of the drive. So you're able to process, uh, you know, multiple command queues and, uh, you know, basically uh, increase the overall uh, uh, queue depth of the products, uh, the ability to support higher queue depth uh, performance by moving, uh, you know, by moving to uh, multiple command queues. Okay. And then, uh, you know, traditional uh, set of hard drives or set of SSDs are capped off at like six, six gigabit per second. Exactly. Do, you, do we have a limitation for NVMe as of yet? NVMe is, uh, there's no limitation as a result of the protocol. The, the, the limitation on the uh, PCIe interface is about four gigabit per second. So, um, the, uh, you know, we're seeing real world performance of 2,500 megabyte per second types of sequential read speeds on the uh, on the PCI, uh, you know, on our, our, our 950 Pro product, um, and as you, that's a, that's using a Gen 3 four-lane solution. As you move to, a, you know, Gen 4 or move to an eight-lane solution on Gen 3, you'll be able to increase the uh, performance of the drive uh, even more significantly. Do you guys have any like internal timeline of when you think that might come out? The eight-lane solution? Yeah, the eight-lane yeah. or even uh, Gen 4. Yeah. So actually, even mm -hmm. at this event, we actually we announced a, a, an enterprise product called the PM 1725 that actually will be a Gen 3 eight-lane solution. So um, we're already starting to see that for enterprise types of applications. Um, and that's probably where that level of performance is actually needed. So that's actually a million IOP type of a product. So significant performance improvement as you're going to that eight-lane solution. Uh, in terms of a Gen 4, um, I don't have a specific timeline for when Gen 4 is actually going to happen. Uh, but, you know, obviously uh, the, the industry is continuing to, to develop and as the ecosystem gets enabled and standards, uh, you know, 
uh, all, all the standards uh, bodies come together and help to uh, establish those next generation interfaces, uh, Samsung will lead the market again and will come out with the, uh, the first uh, Gen 4 product as well. Okay, and can you sort of compare the, uh, the 950 uh, Pro to the 850 Pro yep. in terms of performance? Yeah, so the 850 Pro is maxed out. If you just take it on a sequential uh, read perspective, uh, the 850 Pro is about 550 megabytes per second. Uh, the maximum for SATA 3 is about 600 megabytes per second, and that's the phi limitation of, of yeah. the SATA 3 interface. Uh, so real-world performance is about is maxed out at about 550 megabytes per second. On the um, you know on the uh, uh, 950 Pro, uh, we're actually looking at about 2,500 megabytes per second. So uh, about four and a half times faster uh, going from the SATA 3 to PCIe. Okay. Uh, besides the uh, speed, are there any other um, uh, sort of advantages that uh, NVMe has over? Yeah, one of the things that's interesting, and, and we talked uh, we talked about this in the uh, in the uh, uh, gala, you know, the SSD summit today, was the fact that because it's much more uh, uh, fast at processing data, that your overall energy efficiency actually goes up uh, uh, pretty significantly. So because it's able to process the commands much more quickly, um, it returns to an idle state uh, more quickly, and because it goes. Uh, because the drive uh, consumes almost no energy when it's in idle state, uh, when you're looking at an overall efficiency of the drive and an energy efficiency of the drive, uh, it improves significantly because the utilization actually goes down pretty significantly when you move from a SATA 3 drive to a uh, uh, when you move from a SATA 3 drive to a PC, PCIe drive. And in general, SSDs already had a massive advantage over hard drives in terms of overall energy efficiency. So. Uh, when you start moving to next generation uh, SSD drives, you're going to see even uh, greater energy improvements, energy efficiency improvements. Are there any differences or gains in terms of reliability? Uh, no, I don't think we see anything in terms of, uh, of uh, overall, you know, like endurance or anything like that. We did increase the endurance of the product. Uh, so previously, uh, it was basically uh, 150 terabyte written on the low capacity drives and 300 terabyte written on the higher capacity drives on the 850, uh, 950 Pro. That's been increased on the 256 gigabyte product to a 200 uh, terabyte written rating and a 400 terabyte written rating on the 512 gigabyte drive. So uh, again, significantly increasing, increasing the overall rated endurance of the drive. Um, but that's, you know, again, that's, that's uh, just one measure of the overall reliability and the, the endurance of the drive. Not, not really anything from a NAND perspective that would make it uh, an, any more uh, any higher level of endurance. Yeah, so you guys are still offering a five-year warranty. Right? Five-year warranty on this on this product. You know, and that's primarily because of the you know higher utilization, and we expect a lot of uh, you know business users and high-performance computing uh, kind of users to be able to use this product, which is uh, you know driving higher utilization of the drive. Okay. Uh, one thing that was talked about today was you know obviously there's a lot of talk about uh, 3D NAND, mm -hmm. and you guys have sort of rebranded it as yeah. as VNAND. Right. Can you sort of tell us what that means exactly? Sure. Well, VNAND, I mean, is our shorthand. Uh, I think when we were first launching the technology, so we launched that, announced that last year at the uh, at the SSD, um, you know, the SSD uh, uh, press event uh, in Korea. Uh, you know, when when we were first kind of educating the market about that switch from a 2D or planar technology to a 3D. Uh, technology, a stack technology. We thought it was important to actually teach people about why that was, uh, you know, why that was important. Uh, and now that we've got some traction, I think we announced that we'll ship, uh, you know, 13 million uh, VNAND SSD drives just on the branded uh, uh, Samsung side alone this year. Uh, it's more important now that you know we really drive momentum behind it and start to do cost savings by by moving to our higher density 256 gigabit chips and uh, and uh, our uh, 48 layer process, which is going to continue to drive performance and cost gains. Or cost improvements. Okay, as you guys move to um, to the uh, you know M.2 NVMe, mm -hmm. what does that what does that mean for your traditional SATA? Is that uh, still on the roadmap? Is that going to exist sure. in parallel? Or yeah, so I mean, obviously SATA still dominates in terms of the number of sockets that are out there available to be filled. Um, we don't anticipate that changing um, anytime soon. I think that we're just starting to see uh, uh, OEM PC manufacturers to come out with um, uh, you know uh, systems that have PCIe PCIe uh, uh, slots on them. Mm -hmm. uh, we we anticipate that being uh, you know that shifting over the next say three to five years, uh, but certainly over the next say one or two years, uh, on the consumer side, we still expect uh, SATA drives to still be dominant in terms of the number of units shipped. Um, as the cost improvements you know sort of uh, start to uh, uh, get better on the PCIe side, as the number of sh uh, systems that we ship 
the number of drives that we ship that have a PCIe uh, port on it, you know, the, the, the bomb cost will come down, uh, you know, significantly and, and will we'll become more ubiquitous and, and we don't see any reason why anybody wouldn't ultimately make that shift over to NVMe given, given a choice when the cost is going to be roughly the same between the SATA and the NVMe solutions long term. Uh, do you guys uh, anticipate uh, you know hard drives going away anytime soon? Because you guys also, yeah. in addition to the NVMe uh, announcement, you guys also uh, announced that in 2016 you're going to have a four terabyte, um, you know, traditional SATA drive. Yeah. Um, so you know, with four terabytes, at least for the consumer side, yeah. Uh, do you see traditional hard drives going away? Because yeah, I'm, well, so capacity is only one thing that's uh, I think making people switch over from uh, from uh, hard drives to SSD. So you know, we start to see more mainstream. Uh, price points for SSDs as the cost per gigabyte comes down pretty significantly. I think we announced uh, the last month that we have NPD available uh, for, as an example, that the average cost per gigabyte for an SSD in the market was about 38 cents per gigabyte. That's down from, you know, maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, it was probably over two dollars. So we've continued to see cost declines on SSD and that's going to make it uh, much more competitive in terms of the overall cost for, for a, uh, a solid state drive. Um, we think that especially with the NVMe solution, uh, so you get the better performance, you get the better energy efficiency, it's a more reliable product, it's uh, a lighter product obviously, so for anything in light applications, uh, that, that SSD is going to dominate hard drives uh, uh, going forward. Uh, there's still a, a market, we think, on, on the hard drive side for very high capacity drives, so we're already seeing 6 terabyte and 8 terabyte hard drives that are, are, are still available. Certainly on the enterprise side, we see hard drives still being a significant portion of the overall sales. But certainly, the, the advantages that hard drives have are becoming less and less um, as the cost of SSDs come down significantly. So um, ultimately, we think that for most consumers, um, a, a, uh, an SSD is going to be a better solution, they'll get a better user experience, they'll get a better uh, performance out of their system and, and hard drives will really go, uh, you know, be primarily for backup and storage and, you know, archiving and that type of thing, you know, okay. where, where large amounts of data is needed at low cost. Yeah, speaking of, of storage, uh, you know, one thing that kind of surprised me about the, the new NVMe drives is, you know, obviously the NVMe, they're, they're for enthusiasts, yeah. but the, the size, uh, 256, 512, yeah. I don't mean to sound jaded, but, you know, in today's society, you know, with two terabyte uh, sure. SSDs around, that's kind of small. Um, yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, you know, Samsung has a, has a pretty significant uh, advantage versus our competition in terms of overall capacity. So if you look at our, you know, our 850 Pro and our 850 Evo drive, we've just launched a two terabyte uh, versions of those products. We've announced that we're going to be launching four terabyte drives uh, uh, at the very early uh, next year. Um, and, and that's higher than any other manufacturer in the marketplace. Uh, so we think that for people that want that high capacity drive, that the you know the two terabyte 850 Pro and the 850 Evo are going to be what they're looking for. The issue with uh, with uh, M.2 form factor in terms of overall capacity is it's just a much smaller uh, form factor, and so consequently we can't put as many chips on the board and still be able to uh, have a cost-effective solution uh, if you are uh, you know going to higher gigabit uh, uh, per die types of chips. So consequently, we think that that's the mainstream price point, the mainstream dollar per gigabyte. We announced that we'll have a one terabyte version of the drive uh, 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 later this year, early next year. Uh, so we think that that's uh, again when we when we look at our sales data, you know, uh, 256 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte drives are still the number one and number two selling uh, capacities that we have out there. So we still think that we address the, the majority of the market, and particularly since the M.2 is kind of optimized for size and space, put, put it in uh, thin, thin and light notebooks, um, we think that that's gonna be the capacity that most people are gonna choose initially. And as they you know, migrate to higher capacity drives and as we can uh, increase the capacity of the, of, of the density of the chip, we'll be able to come out with low cost, uh, you know, high capacity solutions. Okay, uh, could we potentially see uh, PCIe? Uh, form factor? You mean a half height half length card? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we actually did announce that we're going to have an enterprise version of that product, uh, the PM1725. We'll have a half height half length uh, a version of that, as well as a two and a half inch version that's going to be NVMe as well. Uh, so, both those were announced at the uh, at the press conference today. Uh, you know, the, it's interesting about the half height half length uh, card. It's kind of a, uh, a retrofit type of a solution, uh, meaning that uh, for the people that didn't necessarily have an M.2 slot available, on the motherboard, it was a good way for them to be able to get PCIe level performance. Uh, we think that uh, a lot of the uh, conversations that we're having with motherboard manufacturers out there, uh, that, that really everybody is going to be moving towards the M.2 form factor mm. in terms of standard uh, onboard types of, uh, of slots. We already see mul man multiple manufacturers that are having uh, uh, you know, multiple M.2 card slots that are available on their, 
on their boards. Um, you know, if, if, if a customer wants to be able to put a, an M.2 card into a kind of adapter card, those third-party solutions are available in the marketplace. So I'm guessing that probably we won't go in that, uh, go in that direction on the client side. Uh, but certainly, um, you know, if the consumer demands there and people want to see those products, um, you know, we'll, we'll ultimately uh, follow where, wherever the market takes us. So we've, we've always done a good job of responding to consumer needs and uh, we'll continue to do that as, uh, as the market develops. And there's a bunch of, you know, uh, NVMe and, and PCIe and, and M.2 SSDs coming out on the market from multiple vendors. Sure. Uh, what makes you guys stand out from, from the competition? The, the, the thing that's unique about Samsung is we're the, you know, first of all, we're the largest memory manufacturer in the world and have been for 25 years. Um, we're the largest NAND flash manufacturer in the world, which means our, our product quality is really unsurpassed. And you can see that by the fact that, you know, we've launched our, our 3D NAND technology uh, really about a year and a half ago. I think it was in, in June or July of last year. Um, and so uh, we've got a significant uh, time to market advantage in terms of our investment, in terms of our R&D, in terms of our CapEx. And that uh, really allows us to be uh, first to the market, whether it was the, having the first consumer class uh, TLC drive, having the first uh, 3D uh, NAND product that was in the marketplace. Uh, we're the only manufacturer in the world that manufactures everything that go goes into their SSD. So we manufacture the DRAM, we manufacture the NAND flash, we manufacture our own controller, we develop our own firmware. Uh, so it really gives us a, a quality advantage, and, and that's why uh, when you know when you look at our product, um, you know we've got significantly lower failure rates, we've got longer warranties, higher performance than our, our competition, and that's all based on the fact that we make everything in house and we optimize everything in house. So when we come out with a new uh, product like the 950 Pro, we're coming out with a new NAND uh, a, a new NAND package, coming out with a new DRAM package, coming out with a new controller, new firmware, all optimized to work together. Uh, we just announced today when we launched the 950 Pro, we'll have our own drivers that are coming out for the 950 Pro, so they can be optimized uh, for for any uh, uh, you know customer that wants to put it into the PC. So that that technical capability of being just the biggest and the largest uh, uh, SSD manufacturer and the largest NAND flash manufacturer in the world, we think that so gives us a, a real uh, performance and quality advantage uh, versus uh, versus the competition that's out there. Cool. Uh, speaking of uh, your competition, uh, you know Intel and, and Micron said recently that they are exploring, or rather, they're on the verge of releasing this new, uh, what they call 3D Crosspoint um, SSD, yep. which is supposed to be, they claim, a thousand times faster than traditional SATA SSDs. Uh, have you sort of been following that news at all, and, and what do you think about that? Yeah, it's interesting. So I, I think they've been a little bit um, kind of unclear about what the commercialization of that product's going to look like, when it's going to be available. And yeah, they said 2016. Yeah, and you know, there's there's been some speculation I think within the industry about what that technology actually is. You know, from our perspective, um, you know, the NAND flash market is always changing. So we've we've migrated the market from SLC to MLC to TLC now to 3D. Uh, we don't think that 3D uh, NAND is kind of the end of the line, so we're looking at investing in other types of technology like uh, MRAM and RERAM and other types of things. We've made small-scale kind of investments in a lot of startups that are, are doing fundamental research into new memory technologies, and we've, we've obviously done a lot of research ourselves because we're the biggest memory manufacturer in the world. Um, you know, in terms specifically of the, uh, of the Intel and the Micron announcement, you know, I think that there's, uh, there's, there's kind of some promise there. There's some interesting uh, things that that technology is available. Uh, you know, we're, we, uh, you know, we obviously haven't announced anything ourselves yet, um, but we're certainly, uh, uh, you know, going to uh, lead the market in terms of uh, transition to new technologies, and and then particularly as the the cost of those technologies come down to the point where they're where they're uh, cost competitive with current technologies like DRAM and NAND flash, you know, you'll see Samsung uh, lead the market in, in terms of. Uh, development and commercialization of those new memory technologies as well. So we think it's probably a little bit premature just in terms of uh, some of those new technologies because of, from a cost perspective. But again, we will uh, we'll continue to invest and we'll continue to lead the market. Um, and we, we should see uh, you know some announcements from Samsung coming up uh, you know very soon in terms of what the next generation technologies will actually look like. Awesome. And then uh, final question: When uh, when does the uh, the 950 come out? 950 Pro is going to be launched uh, next month. So. Uh, prices have been announced. You'll start seeing some reviews on the product from, uh, you know, from from you guys, uh, and uh, will, uh, you know, you'll see product, uh, you know, starting to show up on your favorite retail and retail websites, uh, you know, in, in stores uh, within the next uh, three or four weeks, basically. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. All right.